What's going on traders? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Today is Friday, February 15th, coming to another wrap of a week in the Forex markets. I uh, do these videos every week for everybody who's new to this. I appreciate you tuning in. Go over a full breakdown of the Forex markets, each individual major currency pairs index, how they're performing individually, as well as the US majors, and each individual currency pair that is on my watch list. So I break down a little bit of gold, a little bit of oil, a little bit of the S&P 500 US equity markets. And I go over a breakdown of what happened this past week as well as what I am looking for in the coming week ahead. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so that every week on Friday when I upload these videos, you are notified. Everybody who's returning viewers, love you all, appreciate it as always. Thank you guys. And anybody that wants to leave a comment below for comment purposes or you want to recommend something you want me to cover in the videos, feel free to do so. Smash the thumbs up button. It means a lot, guys. I do these videos for free for all of you, so hopefully you get something out of them, and it would mean the world to me if you throw a like and a comment back. All right, guys, thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and dive into the charts here. I'll catch you guys in there. All right, guys, so starting with the relative performance of the week, this shows us the overall performance of each individual currency pair weighted up against the US dollar to show the overall performers and underperformers of the week. We use this to identify momentum. If we have strong performing pairs, we like to try to ride that strength. If we have underperforming pairs, we like to try to short that weakness. So this week, you guys can see the pound Aussie New Zealand were the top performers of the week with the CAD closely behind. Then we have the dollar, Swiss, Euro, and Yen as the bottom performers of the week. Not too much movement in the Forex markets this week. Not the most volatile, not the most setups, but another good trading week down. And as you guys can see here, these are the strong pairs that we like to look moving into next week, as well as the weak pairs we like to look to try to piggyback that weakness. Hopping over to the indices, we start off here with the US dollar, one of the heaviest, heaviest traded pairs in the markets. Uh, as you guys can see, we have been range bound. As we've been covering the last few weeks, price has not been in a nice trend. We've been stuck between lows and highs, ranging in support resistance zones here. As you guys can see, we had a big W pattern formation here, double bottoming off this 200 day moving average, the 95 support level here. And we have this week now set a new higher high. Price broke up and above this strong resistance at 96.50 and has pretty much just ranged since then. This gave us a new structure higher high. We're now above the 50 day moving average and the 20 and the 200. The 20 looks like it's about to cross up and over the 50. Looks like things are turning higher for the US dollar now. We did have some weakness in the dollar this week. However, we have been range bound for the most part and things are looking more bullish for the dollar now than they have more recently. Taking us over to the Euro, as you guys can see, very similar inverted look though. This is the same thing as the US dollar basically, but flipped upside down. Range bound, ugly markets, support, resistance, price chop in between. More recently, we did have the 20 SMA cross below the 50. We have all three moving averages now in the proper order for a downtrend. Price has broken below support, temporarily went above it, but has now been ranging below it. We have made a new lower low and looks like price is likely to head lower. We might see a pullback, some correction beforehand, but it looks to me, technically speaking, like a short is more in the future than anything. Japanese yen, another one we've got more of a bearish um, outlook on. As you guys can see, we were moving higher, corrected lower, saw what could have been establishing support as a higher low price temporarily bounced off it but then it ended up coming down and breaking through it setting a lower low broke through the 50 day moving average below the 20 and the 50 now 20 sloping lower we did find support on the 200 day moving average down here finding this new lower low price is correcting a little bit off it but all in all moving forward we are looking to see some weakness continue in the end pound sold off did come back down to retest this prior structure higher low. So we had a higher high set all the way up here. Price corrected, thought we might've been finding support here, but kept going. Now found support on the 50 day moving average, had a nice bullish bounce off there. But as you can see, as with the other pairs, we have been pretty much range bound all week here with not too much action. Canadian dollar, another one, similar story. Price has been moving higher, broke the downtrend, higher high, pulled back higher low, pushed up higher high, rejected 200 day moving average, pulled back, pin barred off of the 50 day moving average on support, prior structures, higher low, retest of the higher low, price looks like it is more likely to add higher for the Canadian dollar. Swiss franc, moving lower, continuing to move lower, broke temporarily through this strong support, but immediately, as you can see, this is the break, immediately came back up and above it. This could be an outside reversal, a fakie, 
breakout that reversed came back up so we are still technically bearish 20 then the 50 then the 200 nice spacing between them setting lower lows and lower highs we could be just getting a pullback before continuing lower with this pair Australian dollar, pretty messy chart as well. Just been pretty range bound. We had a, a lower low, then a lower high, then price made a higher low, then a higher high. So this is a new higher high. Pull back to retest prior higher low. Bouncing a little, we've got the moving average just crisscrossing, price moving sideways, pushing lower, then higher, then lower, then higher, then lower. Really ugly price action here, guys. This is not price action we want to be trading. This is price action we want to wait and see where we have a more clear direction as to where price is heading next. Takes us over to New Zealand dollar. As you guys can see on the daily chart here, we did call out this massive double top last week. The daily has corrected from there though. We have moved higher. Could be retesting for a third touch, but looking on the weekly, you can see where this double top is. But now we have some bullishness bouncing off of it. We are still underneath the double top. This could still roll over. This strong resistance at 7000 could hold. We could sell off, but again, like with the Aussie, we are in a range bound market. We kind of want to wait for price to give us an idea of where it's heading next before we can develop any too strong a bias. That takes us over to the S&P 500, the US equity markets. As you guys can see, we were testing the 200 day moving average here, had some indecision candles, small body candles here, open near the close, not too much action, but this Friday candle here is closing in bullish territory. We are closing with a bullish momentum push above this 200 day moving average. Prices continue to look to the upside. We have the 20 crossed above the 50, Price now above the 200, and it looks like the moving average is starting to curl upwards. So we could be going back into a nice bull market. Technically, this has reversed this downtrend. We had a uh, dead cat bounce or a V reversal. Price sold off hard, then immediately corrected back up. And we're now back into bullish territory, back into value. So we are going to be keeping an eye on this chart here to see if these equity markets can continue moving higher. And gold, we are back in another range pound pattern, back in consolidation. As you can see here, we had a nice push. Consolidation, another push out in consolidation again. We could be double topping here. However, all technical indicators are pointing to the upside. We are in an uptrend. We are basing. We are forming consolidation after an impulse leg. So we want to see and look for this to continue higher rather than rolling over. So we'll be looking for breaks and closes up above this 125.20 resistance we have to the upside here. And crude oil, WTI, the US oil index. As you can see, very bullish day here today, testing this strong resistance right under 56 here. Looks like we might be breaking and closing up above this, a little bit of an inverted head and shoulders. Looks like we could be breaking the neckline here, so watch for bullishness in oil in the coming weeks. As technically speaking, we have this crossover of the moving averages, bullish crossover, 20 crossed above the 50. Price is trading above both moving averages. The 20 is still uh, bearish, but that is in the sights for the future if we continue moving higher. But all in all, the oil markets do look more bullish now than they have recently. Alrighty, so moving on to the euro dollar. As you guys can see, price has been making some pretty ugly price action as we've been talking about the past few weeks here. We haven't had any clear trend. We haven't had any clear direction. Price has kind of just been chopping around. We get strong moves up, then strong moves down. Strong moves up, strong moves down, strong moves up, strong moves down is not a very ideal trading condition. Maybe if you're a support resistance trader, range bound market trader, this could be a good trading environment. But for us here at CoreFX and the majority of traders, um, we wanna trade in the direction of trends. We wanna trade strong trending moves. We wanna trade markets that look like this, right? Strong trending moves higher. Even in here, strong trending moves lower. Back here, we wanna trade markets that look like that. We don't wanna trade markets that look like all in here. That is just, unpredictable price movement, choppy price action, whipsaws, fake, false breakouts, all that kind of stuff is what we get in these kind of environments. So we still have the euro dollar on the sidelines. Um, as you can see, we did break out of this channel. We did break below this strong support at 112, but we've now pin barred off of it. So after this strong move lower, we're starting to see an exhaustion of momentum. Down here, you can see we got a little bit of a um, flat pattern, a little bit of a reversal pattern. So we'll see if price is able to continue lower or if maybe we bounce back up into this range above the support and price continues to trade there. If this price continues to move lower and we see a breakdown here of 112, sorry, this was 113, apparently broke. If we see a breakdown here of 112, that is when I'll start looking to short this because I'll start looking for a market like this to come. See, after all this consolidation, price exploded out. All this consolidation, we're hoping to see price explode out.
right? All this consolidation, price exploded out. All this consolidation, price exploded out. So that's what we want to see happen here now. Whether it's the upside or the downside, we just want to be ready for it. And we want to be able to act when it happens. So we're keeping close eyes on it, close tabs on it, but waiting, in fact, for it to break out of this range. Pound dollar is the never-ending pullback. After this strong parabolic move, I've been looking for pullbacks to go long on this all through here. We have not gotten it. After this pin bar candle, I thought we might have, but it continued to sell off. Temporarily found support continue to sell off. Now we've hit the 50 day SMA, right? We have a strong bullish engulfing candle off of it. So price hit it, sellers tried to push below, buyers came back in, pushed it all the way back up above the highs of the day before. So we closed above the close, I mean the open of the day before, we closed above the highs of the day before, and we totally engulfed this entire day's price action with this, showing a huge bullish shift of momentum with bulls coming into the market. It also happens to be on an area of support and resistance. Price broke below and immediately reversed above. 50-day moving average. And if we throw our good old friend Leonard Fibonacci out here from the swing low to swing high before this pullback, you can see we are right on the 50% Fibonacci level. So we have a lot of confirmation here now showing us this. I'm going to be looking for longs again this week. We are still above the 50-day moving average. So until price stays below that, I'll still be looking for this to pull back and continue higher. One of the main things I'm watching for is this counter trend line. I'd like to see a break and close above that, potentially pull back retest before moving higher. So I will be continuing to look for longs here, but if we continue to sell off below this level we're at now, this is the last standing line of defense for me to try to get a pullback on this, and then I'll be moving on. We have some better price action here in the next couple pairs. We've got dollar Swiss franc continuing to move higher. We had this higher high push. Exhaustion, higher low, higher high. Push a little bit of exhaustion on the way, but pushed all the way up to here at the dollar ten level. This is where we found resistance. Nice bearish engulfing off of it. Then we have a nice pin bar rejection the next day. And now price looks like it's ready to continue to correct. I'm looking for this level right down here around parity and a little below 1.000 and a below. We have a daily level falling on top of a weekly level. So this is the area I'll be looking for shorts. So now all I need to happen is a little bit more of this, come down, find support, and show us that it's ready to continue higher. So this is the area I will be looking for longs for this pair in the coming weeks. Dollar CAD, a little bit of mixed price action, but um, at least a little bit better moves. We have been in an ugly choppy range on this one too, but not for that long, right? It's only been for the last couple months. Um, so we got a couple things going on here. We have resistance established after this strong move lower, right? We had this strong push to the downside. Typically you'd go to this leg for this retracement, but we're going to go to the whole move, right? This is the, the higher time frames I talk about with the Fibonacci, the, the Google maps view, the zoomed out view, right? We're going from here down to this low. We've pulled back to the 382 to 50% fib level. We've got 50 day moving average closing in on the top. We've got rejections to the upper zone, bearish engulfing here, price went back, rejected again, bearish engulfing here. So we're rejecting it. So if we see this level here, this is a strong zone that price is now rejecting that we wanna keep an eye on to see if it holds. Now the inverse side to that would be the fact that price has made, one sec, sorry. Price has made a lower low, came back to test here. Another lower low pulled all the way back to retest the prior lower high. Now I made a higher low, and could be making what we see as an inverted head and shoulders candle, uh, pattern. This would be our neckline. This would be where we'd wanna see a break and retest of, right? So there's always two sides to everything and we're gonna keep an eye on both. But that is what I see developing here in the dollar CAD. And we'll keep an eye on both of them to see which one develops this week. Dollar yen is continuing to move higher. We are now in an uptrend. We've set higher highs and higher lows. Broke above the 50 day moving average, 20 days curling upwards. We set a new higher high above this strong 110 resistance. Now support, wanna see price pull back to it, get a third touch to this trend line, right on the support level. On down time frame, we'll see if we can catch a Fibonacci level. So if we pull back to that zone there, from this major move up to this top here, That'll be right around the 382 to 50 level. Probably kiss the 50. 
So we'll be looking for price to pull back here and you can see all the traffic in this area. This is a very, very highly watched level and there's gonna be a lot of indecision around that level. Whether it continues higher or breaks through and sells off, we'll have to wait and see, but we will be looking to play the continuation higher. Not too much on my watch list this week. Um, a lot of funky price action been going on in the Forex markets. Been focusing a little more energy on futures. Um, but one thing I'm seeing here on the CAD yen, a little bit of a double topping pattern. As you guys can see here, we had one touch to the resistance, failed. Second touch to the resistance, failed. Bearish engulfing, right? <clears throat> so we're going to keep an eye on this pair. See if looking left, you can tell that this zone is pretty strong. You can see it has acted as support and resistance in the past. Rejections, strong moves away, strong breaks to break. We're at a strong level. Now we're above the 50 SMA. Price has moved back into uptrend, basically. However, this pattern does look pretty promising. Taking it down a time frame, you can see that massive double top here. I drew this trend line cutting off that just because I cut off the, the wick of this flash crash. Uh, just, I don't think that should be used for any analysis right now. I think it's more so, um, you know, finding where these candlestick bodies and wicks all connect the most. So I'm waiting for a break of that. Obviously with this pattern, we want to see the neckline break, which is this right here. We have top neckline, top neckline, need to see that break. This trend line is just additional confirmation, but I'll be keeping an eye on this pair to see if it's able to move lower. Aussie Cat, I really like continuing to move lower. Had a strong break a couple weeks ago. Range bound most of this week. Came back up to retest this zone. And we actually got a spinning top candle, indecision candle, small body, upper and lower wick on a very significant zone. So we're going to have to wait and see um, where price heads. As you can see, that's a nice 382 bounce from this last move lower. So we are at a nice level. Thing in the lower time frame to see if we can see anything. We're double topping here on the four hour on this zone. So we had an initial touch of the zone, strong rejection, second touch. We had a nice shooting star, doji, upper wick rejection candle here. Now we want to see if this holds, price sells off, and look for shorts to ride this pair lower and potentially catch the next leg lower of this downtrend. We got Aussie New Zealand finally broken closed out of this range on this strong support. And you could see we had a nice bearish break, close, continue to lower, and now we got an indecision candle. So we're getting exhausted. Price action slowing down. Sellers may be losing control. We have some indecision, potential double bottom here, a little bit of a, more of a little range pattern, if anything. But now we'll be looking for price to do this, find resistance in this value area, and try to short it for the next push lower to try to catch that next move. So Aussie dollar, Aussie New Zealand dollars back on our radar. Just watching for a specific play to set up. New Zealand CAD. Last week we were looking for this to break below, retest, move lower. It did fake and trap out anybody that had just pending stops below here, trying to just catch this breakout. That is a perfect example of really market manipulation, but um, a false breakout. All right, triggered everybody short below this strong support level here. As soon as everybody got triggered, immediately shot all the way up, trapping everybody, stopping everybody out, pushing all the way higher. So real quick, small example of how this could happen with manipulation. Big movers in the markets that have lots of orders to fill when they trade, need liquidity to fill their orders. Let's say they want to go long on this pair. They know there's a lot of retail traders and a lot of traders down here with sell stops, right? That's a breakout trade where you want your trade to get triggered on the way out of the breakout, triggers you in and continues to fall. These sell stops create a pool of liquidity for long orders that they need the other side filled on. So they drop a pen, they drop a, an order for a ton of orders. And what they don't want to happen is they have, let's say, this is where they want to go long. They don't want to go long in here. Their orders fill and just shoot price higher. And then they get slippage and now all their orders are filling up here instead of filling down here, which is where they want them to. So what they do is move price lower to trigger all these sell orders to fill all their buy orders. Now all their orders get filled, price launches up, they don't face slippage. 
and um, the retail traders, the pig that gets slaughtered once again. Now, this doesn't always happen. This isn't always the case. This is just some instances of what can occur with the situations like this. So I just wanted to bring it to light because this looked like a good learning opportunity to show that. But now what we'll be looking for this week is one of two things. Back to the top of this range, back to the top of where we shorted it here and here. Now we want to look to see if it's going to give us another shorting opportunity. If so, this is more of a support and resistance range bound trade. You know, selling resistance, buying support. But the other outcome could be with this strong bullish momentum we see with these back-to-back -back daily candles on Wednesday and Thursday, we could see a nice break above, pull back, try to catch that long to catch that move, right? So these are a few of our options. Uh, once it comes back down to the bottom of this range, we could see this play out again. But you could either ride the top of this range back down to the bottom or wait for it to break up and above and continue higher. All right, so that just about does it, guys, for my watch list and breakdowns of the technical charts this week. Real quick into what's going on next week on the calendar. As you guys can see, Monday we start off with monetary policy meeting minutes. This is a recap of the Reserve Bank of Australia's policy statement meeting. We have unemployment out of the pound early Tuesday morning. We have wages out of Australia Tuesday night. FOMC meeting minutes, the recap of the FOMC Federal Reserve meeting, unemployment out of Aussie. So Aussie already starts with three back-to-back -back strong news days. Then we have a bunch of PMI numbers out of Europe. Europe is a big-time spotlight in the macroeconomic world right now. They have some countries entering recessions. They've got a lot going on with Italy, uh, Germany slowing down. All in all, the whole, the whole Eurozone is starting to slow down. And of course, we have that dark cloud of Brexit floating over top of everything. So very, very volatile stuff going on macroeconomically. And this is stuff we want to keep an eye on to see the overall health of this zone. We've got durable goods out of the U.S. 8.30 a.m. on Thursday. We have a couple uh, central bankers speaking later in the day, Thursday. And then Friday, we have retail sales out of Canada. Draghi speaks out of the European ECB. A bunch of FOMC speakers out of the U.S. And that wraps up the week there. All right, guys. So not too crazy of a week this week, but still definitely have um, a lot on the radar heavily weighted on the first half of the week unlike most weeks when the second half is heavily weighted we have a heavily weighted first half of the week so we want to be very patient and careful guys it's been a very tough trading environment in the forex markets there's so much going on macroeconomically that these fundamental headlines are just dominating the charts that is why we see a lot of these range bound markets these whipsaw moves these false breakouts you name it um, this environment has been extremely difficult to trade it's because of all the different things going on in the macroeconomics you've got brexit You've got the U.S. and its own government, um, different houses of power, balance of powers with the wall, with everything going on in the U.S. right now. We have trade deals with China and the U.S., two of the biggest economies in the world. We have Brexit, obviously. We have the Eurozone, a lot of weakness, a lot of different countries, a lot of um, companies slashing expectations and cutting their earnings. Um, really just, just across the board, we've got Venezuela, we've got a number of things going on across the board just causing serious market volatility. And it's a good thing to have volatility, but when it's this unpredictable and fundamentals are dominating the headlines and dominating the movement of price so much, it is pretty tough as a trader to um, you know, make the right trades. So we wanna be very careful, extra picky, sit back when there's events and things to watch out for. Uh, unplanned events we are never going to be able to prevent. We, that's why we use our stops. That's why we use our strategies and stick to our plan. However, we can avoid un unnecessary losses by staying out of the markets at times. We don't need to be in them. At times, there's news events and all. So just be very weary of that, guys. Stick to your plan. Stick to your discipline. Continue to journal. Stay focused. See what's going on in the markets, and we will see better times. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I hope everybody enjoys these videos. I really do appreciate everyone tuning in to watch them. Can't thank you all enough. I hope you guys get a lot out of them. Again, smash the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment below. Let me know something you want me to cover. Let me know how I'm doing. Anything you want. Um, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you in the next one.